Okay, kids. All right, so we are going to start doing multi-step equations today and solving them, okay? When we solve equations, it's all about balance, okay? So that up there is a picture of a scale. Would you say that that scale is balanced? How come? Yeah, one side's lower than the other, right? So what, what, what does it mean to be balanced? Equals, right? The same on each side. So we need to keep that in mind. When we're solving equations, we're going to be like moving stuff across an equal sign. We have to make sure we keep our equation balanced. And an equation is a scale, okay? So each side of the equal sign needs to be balanced. <clears throat> um, we need to discuss what inverse operations are. Do you have any idea what that means? Do you know what inverse means? Okay. Inverse means like the opposite, okay? Like how to undo something. Operations are add, subtract, multiply, divide, square, cube, that, that kind of stuff, okay? So what if I asked you, what is the inverse of adding? Subtracting, Subtracting right? Yeah, it's the opposite, good. So adding... And subtracting, those are inverses, okay? Because if I did um, if I did 7 minus 7, that gives me 0, right? That's how I would do the inverse. Or vice versa, if I did negative 3 plus 3, that also gives me 0, right? So when we're moving things from one side to the other, we need to move what's going to make it not on that side anymore. I can't just add and subtract random numbers. The point is to move something completely from one side to the next. Okay. <clears throat> what about um, another uh, pair of opposites you think we might use? Division. And what is, what's the inverse of division? Multiplication. Yeah. So multiplying and dividing. Handwriting is wonderful today. Those are inverses of each other, okay? Because in their, in their case, if I divide, give me a number. One. one. Well, give me, give me another number. Four. If I divide four divided by four, that gives me one, right? Yes? <clears throat> so if I was trying to move a four that's being multiplied to the other side, I would have to divide it because that's the inverse. That's how I'm going to have to move things, Okay. Well, your favorite thing in the world is fractions, right? Give me a fraction. Seven over three. Seven over three, okay? If I have seven over three, okay, and we're trying to undo this fraction, you're going to multiply by your denominator. So you would multiply by three, okay? What that does is it cancels out your denominator, and you're left with just seven. Why does this happen? Because when you multiply by 3, you're technically multiplying by the fraction 3 over 1. Across the top is 21 divided by 3, which simplifies to just 7. We don't usually do all that work in between, okay? But that's why it works. So if you multiply a fraction by its denominator, it just eliminates the denominator, and what's in your numerator is still there, okay? But if we do that to one fraction, I have to do it to the complete other side of my equal sign. <clears throat> yeah? Okay, so we're going to be using inverses today to solve things. <clears throat> you got some fill in the blanks. I know you're excited for them. So recall that to solve an equation means to find all the values of the variable that makes the equation true. Each value that makes an equation true is a solution. Equivalent equations, so the highlighted things are your fill in the blanks, friends. Pencils should be in hands right now. I know the first box is small, I'm sorry. It was a picture and you, we couldn't change it. Equivalent equations have the same solution. A multi-step equation is an equation that uses more than one property of equality to solve it. To solve this type of equation, you can undo each operation using properties of equality or the inverse. It's very fancy for using the inverse, okay? We're gonna work backwards um, in the order of operations, makes this process simpler. 
each step in this process results in an equivalent equations. So we're going to stick to um, like two or three step equations today. <clears throat> if there's ever a loose number in your equation, that's usually what we're going to move over first. Okay. If you had just a random plus one or a minus five just hanging out on the end, that's the easiest thing to move to the other side. And then we'll deal with what's left over. If a variable is being multiplied or being divided by something, then we'll deal with that afterwards. So it's kind of, that's what it means about kind of going backwards in order of operations. If we can add or subtract first to move a loose number, we actually do that first, which again, inverse opposite. So it makes sense that we're kind of doing the opposite of order of operations. We got our blanks filled in? Yes? Cool. So to summarize the properties of equality, what does that mean? It means, and this is what you're writing down on your paper in that little spot, what you do to one side of the equal sign, you must do to the other side. Okay? We have to keep our scale balanced and don't let it tip. Okay? This is going in this space right here. Right here. This space right here. This space right here is where this is going. Memo, you get a stamp for doing notes today. So all you literally have to do is just write down what's on the TV. And you get a stamp. So this is going in this blank space on your notes right now. What you do to one side of the equal sign, you must do to the other side. We have to keep our scale down. So I can't just subtract one on one side and leave it alone. That's not the same. I got to do it to both sides. <clears throat> so what we do to one side, you must do to the other. We good? We got it? Okay. So our first one, you have 4x minus 2 equals 5. Okay. We're going to talk about the thought press process that you should go through. So when you see this, the first thing you should think about is what two operations are already being used in this equation? What do you see happening with 4x minus 2? I see subtraction. What else do you see? And multiplication. Good. So again, this is just what we think about. You don't have to write this down. I see multiplication. And we see division. I'm oh, not division. What am I doing? Subtraction. Okay. So what would I use to work backwards? If multiplying and subtracting are already happening, how am I going to undo those? What do I, how do I undo multiplication? What is the inverse of multiplying? Dividing. So we're going to, when I solve, dividing is going to happen. How am I going to undo the subtraction in, in that problem? We're going to add. Okay. Which one would I do first? Yeah, with the two. Which one would I do first? Is there a loose number? Yeah, we're going to add first. So we're actually going to add the 2 to the other side. We're going to add 2. Then whoop, we're going to divide by what? What's being multiplied? The 4. So then we're going to divide by 4. Okay, so that's like the thought process, process you should go through. See what's happening. I have 4 times x and then I have a minus 2. So to solve this, I have to undo both of those pieces. My 2 is being subtracted. That's my loose number. So we're going to add that first. So again, adding 2, it makes this 2 go away. I have to also do it to the other side. So we still have 4x. Negative 2 plus 2, that cancels it out, right? It's a 0. That's why we do it, because we're moving it away from my x. I want my x by itself. But my other side is now a what? It's not a 5 anymore. It's a 7.
All right, and then what are we going to do after this step? We did the adding. I'm left with 4 times x. So I need to do, I need to divide by 4. Divide both sides by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. That's why we do it, because do we usually write 1x? No. Instead of 1x, we're just going to write x, right? So the 4s cancel. I have x by itself now. 7 over 4, does that simplify as a fraction? No, it doesn't. If it was 8 over 4, that, that would have been nice, right? Because then that's just 2. But here, 7 over 4 does not simplify. So 7 over 4 is my answer. Just like that. What's up? Um, we typically don't do mixed fractions in here. Um, I will never do it, to be honest. So I would leave it like that, or you could change it to a decimal. That would be your other option if you wanted to. What is this? Two point, I mean, 1.75, mm -hmm. I think, if you actually divide. Like that. So one of those would be the appropriate answer. I'd stay away from mixed fractions. That's rounding, though, That's and that's exact. So that's the better answer. That is the exact answer. Yeah, you're, you'll figure out we try to round as little as possible. Because when you round, then, then you create errors. It's not as exact anymore. All right, good. Ready for another one? Yes. All right, your next one is 2a minus 6 equals 4. So what's happening? I see multiplying just like last time. I see subtracting just like last time. So what are we going to do first? There you go. We're going to add 6 to both sides. So we still have 2a. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0. We don't write plus 0, right? Doesn't, doesn't, don't need to do that. But my other side is now equal to what? 10. What's happened to my a? It's not by itself yet. What's, what's attached to it? A 2. How is that 2 attached? By multiplying. So how am I going to undo that? divide. And we have to divide both sides by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. Again, I'm not going to write 1a. We're just going to have a. And a equals what? What is 10 divided by 2? 5. So that one worked out nice and pretty. Uh, this problem says check your solution. How could I check my answer to see if it was right? Hmm? You could take your answer and actually plug it back in if you would like to, to check it. And it's always smart to do it. So instead of 2 times A, I'm going to try 2 times 5. Okay? And we're going to see, does that equal 4? Well, what's 2 times 5? 10. What's 10 minus 6? 4. So did it work? Yes. So you can always know if you did this right by plugging it back in. Okay? And you have calculators. You could quickly do it in your calculator. Yeah? Okay. Number three. Oop, that's number two again. There we go. Number three. All right. I have n plus one divided by negative two equals 15. So my whole left side is a fraction, right? We talked about this. How do we undo fractions? How am I going to get rid of that denominator? Okay, let me ask you this. What operation is a fraction? Is it add, subtract, multiply, or divide? divide. Fractions are division. So what's the inverse of that? Multiply. So what am I dividing by in this fraction? We're dividing by negative 2. So what's going to be the opposite? Multiply by negative 2. Okay? So you multiply both sides by the denominator. Um, over here, that just takes the denominator away. n plus 1 is by itself. But our other side is now 15 times negative 2. 
So now this is negative 30. So when you have a fraction, you multiply by the denominator. Okay? Because fractions are division. You're dividing by your denominator. So to undo it, you're going to multiply by your denominator. Now, what do I got? What's the only thing I have left to do? Yeah, I have n plus 1. How am I going to move the plus 1? What's the opposite of plus 1? Minus 1. So we have n is equal to negative 30 minus 1 gives me negative 31. All right, and if we plugged it back in to check, negative 31 plus 1 divided by negative 2, does that equal 15? Well, negative 31 plus 1, that's my parentheses, right? That gives me negative 30. Negative 30 divided by negative 2 gives me positive 15. So it works. Okay, so this is just checking. That's what you can do kind of afterwards just to double check that you've done it right. So looking at my original problem, I saw adding, I saw dividing. Okay, get rid of your fraction first. So we multiplied. And then I was left with adding. So to undo that, we have to subtract. All right, ready for number four? Okay. Number four, we have 3m plus 4 equals negative 11. So first thing you think about, what is already happening on this side with your variable? I have, so here's my variable, right? My m. I have a 3 and I have a 4. How is the 3 attached to the m? It's 3 times m. Yeah, that's multiplying. How is that 4 attached to the m? Technically it is, what's in front of the four? A plus, right? So it's being added to my M. So we have multiplying and we have adding. So what are we gonna do to solve this problem? We're gonna divide and we're gonna have to subtract at some point. Okay, which one do we do first? Is there a loose number? Four, so how am I gonna move four to the other side? By subtracting it. So we're going to subtract 4 to the other side. 4 minus 4 is 0. So I'm left with 3m equals negative 11 minus 4. Negative 15. Good. What do we have left to do? Get the m by itself. So what is still attached to my m? A 3. How is it attached to my m? By multiplying. So how am I going to undo that multiplying? Divide. And I'm going to divide by what? No, nope. Divide by that 3. Good. So that becomes 1m, which we're just going to say m. Almost. What kind of a 5? Negative 5. There you go. Good. And if you want to check, 3 times negative 5 plus 4. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. And 15 plus 4 is negative 11. So it checks out. <clears throat> Can I get through the next two problems? Okay. We good? All right, number five. All right, so I have eight equals eight minus five over seven. So what do you see happening in this problem? What is happening to my X? I am subtracting a five. What else is happening on that side with my X? We're dividing by seven, good. So which one of those do we wanna get rid of first? 
Yeah, let's get rid of that seven. Okay, let's undo my fraction. So how am I going to get rid of that seven or move it to the other side? Well, I'm not being added though. I'm gonna multiply it because this is being divided by seven. So to undo that, we're going to multiply by seven, both sides. That cancels this out. We're left with, this is seven times eight, so that's 56 is equal to x minus five. So the seven didn't disappear, it just got absorbed on the other side with the eight. Does that make sense? It's still there, my scale is still balanced. It didn't just go away. <clears throat> All right, what is left with my x? What's still over there? A minus five, so how are we gonna get rid of that? Positive five, good, add it over here. That's gone. So as I moved it over, what does that uh, left side turn into? What? 50. 61 equals X. Sixty-one minus five is fifty-six. Fifty-six divided by seven is eight. So my answer works. Any questions for me up to this point? We got one more on the front. All right, number six. Number six is uh, x over three plus four equals 13. <clears throat> How is this one different from the one right before this? How are these? So I have fractions, but how is it different? Yeah, my, my whole plus four is not part of the fraction, is it? Number five, that minus five was part of my fraction that was in it. So here, it's not. That plus four is a loose number. So if we have a loose number, we get rid of that first. So we're gonna subtract four to the other side. So now our fraction stands by itself. 13 minus four is nine. Now that the fraction stands alone, now we can take care of it. It is X divided by three. So how are we gonna undo divide by three? Multiply by three. So we're left with X equals what? 27. And I can plug it back in. 27 divided by three is nine. Nine plus four is 13. It works out. Yes, sir. What did you do? Okay, what did you do? Okay, make sure you're showing me work. Just make sure we show work. I can follow along. All right, we good? All right, when you flip over, what does the top say? It says you try. So you are going to try those four on the back. I'm going to walk around and stamp papers if you did your notes. Okay? So while you're working on the back, I'm going to come around and stamp if you completed the front of your page. Um, and then we'll um, go through these before you leave today so you know if you did them right or not. Okay? But right now we're pausing. You're working on 7, 8, 9, and 10 on the back. I'm going to come stamp you off if you did 1 through 6 on the front. What's up? Okay. Hold on, Sam. Hold on, then. We good? Yeah? Okay. Work on the back while I walk around. All right. So with number six, I'm oh, sorry, number seven. What do we do first? It's 3x minus 5 equals 16. What should you do first? 
plus five. Good. Add five of them to the other side. That's how it's being moved. I don't know why it's not showing up. Plus five. There we go. Plus five. So we're left with three X equals what? What is 16 plus five? 21. 21. Good. Then what did you do? We divided by three. Three divided by three is one. So now we have one X, but we don't write one X. We just say X equals, what is 20, 21 divided by three? Seven. Don't tell me you're lost later or you don't know what's happening. Don't, I don't want to hear that from you. Because if you're not paying attention, that is why you're going to be lost. So I need you to stay with me. We good on that one? Yes? Are we still working on eight? Yeah. Are we ready to check eight? Yeah. Ready to check? Yes? I think most of you had seven and eight done. So let's, I'll, I'll help you with eight, and then I'll give you some time to do those last two. All right, eight is a fraction. Don't freak out. Fractions are division. So it is being, it is 2x minus 4 divided by 2. So how do I undo divide by 2? We times 2. And you're going to do it to both sides of our, our equal sign. Times 2 times 2. That moves the denominator to the other side. So it's not there anymore. 2x minus 4, though, is here. We didn't touch that. But now what's on the other side if I moved my 2 over by multiplying? 5 times 2, which is 10. Okay? If you just have 2x minus 4 equals 5, your scale is not balanced because all you did was erase the 2. You didn't move it, okay? You can't take things off the scale. You can just move them to the other side to keep it balanced, okay? So make sure we do not make that mistake. The two is still there. It doesn't disappear. It just gets absorbed into the other side. All right, now we have 2x minus 4 equals 10. It looks a whole lot like the problem you just did. So what am I going to do first now? So I already, I already am subtracting. So we're going to add. Good. So here's 2x, and now we are equal to... 14, and our final step, divide by what? Two. Divide by 2. Good. 2 divided by 2 is 1. We have our 1x, and it's equal to 14 divided by 2, which is 7. So, yeah, we got 7 again. All right, we're going to pause again, and I'm going to let you keep uh, continue to work on number 9 and number 10. Oh, someone's calling me. Hold on. Here we go. So what are we going to do first? If we said we're moving our loose number, what's the loose number? What's a number just hanging out? It's a constant. There's no letter to it. The 3. Is that 3 a positive or negative number right now? It's a positive 3, right? We haven't seen one where, where the number is up front. That's okay. It's a positive 3. So how am I going to move positive 3 to the other side? We're going to subtract it because 3 minus 3 is 0. See how that takes it away? It moves it to the other side. 3 minus 3 is 0. We're left with x minus 5 equals 11 minus 3 is 8. Now I have x divided by 5. So to undo divide by 5, we're going to multiply by 5. That is now gone. We have x equals 8 times 5, which is 40. So number 9 gives you x equals 40. Number 10. Also has a number up front, okay? It's leading, leading the equation. So I have 4 minus 4x equals negative 24. I have a loose number. I have something here with no variable attached. That's a constant. I need to move that out of the way. Am I going to do 4 plus 4? Does that make sense? 
No, four plus four is eight. That doesn't get rid of it. That makes it even more complicated. We're not doing that. We're going to do four minus four. That's how it turns into zero. It, it's gone now. I have to do it to the other side. So four minus four is gone. I now have negative four X. Do we get that? Do we get why it's gone? Four minus four is zero. I'm not gonna write zero minus four X. Does that make sense? The zero is assumed. So I don't have to write it anymore. Negative 24 minus four gives me negative 28. Okay, again, you have calculators, use them. Okay, use them. You get to use them for the whole test. So get used to it. Use your calculators. Negative, I took away 24. I took away four. I took away 28. And now I have negative four attached to my X by multiplying. So we're going to divide both sides by negative four. And we get X equals, apparently our lucky number today, seven again. How come it's not negative seven? I had all those negatives. Yeah, the negatives cancel each other out. That's negative divided by a negative. So we have X plus seven again. All right, so please make sure these go into your binders in your notes section. You're going to use them tomorrow when we have another practice day. You need your Chromebooks tomorrow. We're doing another Chromebook thing. Okay, so make sure you have your Chromebooks. If you did not finish section 1-1 yesterday, you'll have a chance to finish that on Friday.